All right, so we got a special guest today here at the Hawksworks booth in Las Vegas at SHOT Show 2024. We've got the one and only Queen of Guns, Orin Julie, all the way from Tel Aviv, Israel. She traveled a very long way to be here, and she's taking time out of her very busy schedule with Terran Tactical, and everybody wants to see her, to come talk to me up here. So I appreciate you taking the, taking the time to come say hi and talk to me and, and give me a little bit of the story, because I don't really know a lot about you. I've seen all your stuff all the time, <laughs> and I want to know more about like what you do, where you're from, what your life's been like, and what kind of things you do. Um, and, and I think a lot of other people would like to know too. There's a lot of people that I find that have, they know you from Instagram or TikTok and things yeah. like that. And they've seen you all over the place and, and, and people love you. So thank you I appreciate so you taking the time. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for having me. Yeah. I know that your schedule is busy as well. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I love to be in America. This is the first thing I need to say. America is such an amazing place. And I want you guys, everyone that listened to this podcast, Please protect your Second Amendment at all cost. This is oh, the yeah. first thing I want to ask you. And I love America for its freedom, for its, for its people. And the Second Amendment is such an important thing to have because we don't have it in Israel. And you saw what happened on October 7th. Oh, and yeah. if people think that it, they came to us because of the land, this is not right. They, they came at us because... We are Western world, we are Jewish, we related to America. They want to end this whole world. They want to make this world Sharia laws. And they're coming to, they're already here, excuse me. They're already in America. So you better be prepared so you can protect your family from the awful things they've done to us. And they, they've done awful things to us. Just imagine being a husband in the south of Israel, seeing your wife being your children being tortured, and then they shoot you, and there's nothing you can do because Israel has strict laws to obtain firearms. And also, if you you got a license to have firearms, you only get one pistol with 50 rounds. You can never fight terrorists yeah. with pistol in 50 rounds and this did they, is madness did they change that though like recently i've noticed a lot of people like the news anchor that you saw on on tv with a pistol behind her back yeah. have they been allowing people to get like firearms more uh readily accessible and so, things like that now um what they did was to expand the criteria to get a uh, license yeah. but it's still only pistol with 50 bullets and there is nothing you can do with pistol and 50 bullets like yeah. for it, it's better than nothing yeah, yeah. but if terrorists come with AK-47 and endless amount of ammo, there is nothing you can do. Yeah. And this is crazy because we are a small country yeah. surrounded by evil enemies. We need firearms. Yeah. And they did expand the criteria so more people can have this pistol, but it's only if you are you were like a combat soldier in the IDF and most of the oh. people wa weren't. So yeah. what's the point, you know? Yeah. And this is why I love about America so much. Power to the people. You know who, you know the woman who plays uh, Wonder Woman? Gal Gadot, yeah. Gal Gadot. She's been very outspoken about this whole she's thing. She's amazing. I've been following her for a bit and seeing what she's been doing. She's been doing some good work to to, to give the voice to you guys. You but know, then, talking about but you then guys. you have the Hadid family. Yeah. That... Uh, they didn't condemn what Hamas did on October 7th. Yeah. And when Israel started defending itself, oh no, they do genocide in Gaza. This is lies. Mm. And the Western world needs to wake up very fast because we think that they think, like, like you and I think, right? Yeah. We want to have quiet, happy life. We sure. want to raise our children happily and, you know, to grow all together and everything's fine. This yeah. is what we want. This is not what they want. They yeah. want to make this world Sharia laws and this is all they care about. So yeah. the Western world needs to wake up fast. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I think that, like, first off, I think that you're spot on about the inherent right to defend your own life and self-defense. So that's one of the reasons why the Second Amendment is so important because that is, at least in America, we believe, and most of the people I know believe, that God bestows upon you the inherent right to self-defense and to protect your own life, to protect your family's lives, and to protect the, your friends' lives around you and your community's life. And so that's one of the reasons why I think that's been so heavily ingrained. It's also why that's the Second Amendment, right? Because the First Amendment is free speech, right? The second one is the right to bear arms, right? And it shall not be infringed. Never. Never. It shall never be infringed, and so and that's an important part of American society, and it's an important, uh, it's an important aspect to 
uh, just American life. And yeah. it's been like that since since the founding of the country, like especially like you look at, at back in the 1800s, for example, everybody had a revolver on their hip because you didn't know what was out there. There were wild animals. There were bandits, people trying to kidnap you and yeah. take you, take your family. There were people that were trying to kidnap you into slavery. There was like the Native American tribes that were out there that were very that were violent towards us. I mean, we were violent towards them, too, obviously. But and that's a very complicated thing. But still, you need to have something to defend yourself. What happened in 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 our in October 7th is a is a prime example of why people need to have firearms to protect themselves yep. and their family. And I, I heard there was a thing where they allowed people to have like one rifle per household in certain villages or something like oh, that. In, in certain villages, there are like a group of uh, people that were trained to be like the defensive of this kibbutz or uh, settlement. In a kibbutz, what is a kibbutz? It's, a kibbutz, it's like a settlement. Okay, just like, a settlement yeah, there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, but but it's not like you can have an AR-15 in your home. No. No, it's not like that. No. It, just think about it. Even on October seventh, um, th th this group that need to like protect the settlement or the city, yeah. they had to go to the armory to take their firearms. This is madness. Yeah, that's that's. This is, well, how how is that going to help? Because it's exactly. like way over there. What like if they've got if they've got you know Hamas on their doorstep, how are they going to have time to run to the exactly. armory and grab a weapon to defend their family? And, and there is, a, is and there is an amazing story about a girl in uh, one of the kibbutzim, one of the settlements there, yeah. that she heard the sirens going on. Yeah, it was like six thirty in the morning, and she just called everyone before they they got to the place. And they took their firearms and they protected the, the um, settlement. Yeah. And they sa she saved the whole people, all the people there. Good it's, for her. It, yeah, her name is Inval uh, Lieberman, and she is amazing. And uh, and another amazing thing about this um, thing that happened to us is that we saw how women are badass. Yeah. For real. Oh, for real. The women fought there like crazy. Yeah. They saved life. And I am so honored and humbled to be a Jewish woman like them because they are f amazing. They f terrorists. Yeah. They they were in tanks, and I am so proud to be an Israeli woman. Yeah, they fought. Right. They fought against evil. Yeah. Is what it was. It was, yeah. it was evil versus good. And there are some absolutely incredibly amazing stories of heroism yeah. that have that were conducted by different various individuals throughout the place. I mean, I I became friends with uh, a few of the people that were at the festival. And I saw wow. some of the videos that they had filmed while they were hiding in the bushes and stuff at that festival. And I talked to a lot of them and I was able to give some talk about some of their stories on like social media and stuff. Because, I mean, it was absolutely incredible, like some of the things that they went through to survive that situation. Yeah. And some of the, the sacrifices that people made, like piling 15 people inside of a small car to get everyone away because everybody was getting shot. Like, I mean, absolutely incredible, incredible story, man. Like. And I mean, I, when, when this whole thing went down, I was in Washington, D.C. at the time because I was attending a, a retirement ceremony up there and attending uh, another ceremony for the Hunter 7 Foundation who are doing work with Huxworks, this booth that we're working in. And I was actually up there uh, dealing with them. And the day that it happened, I think it was Sunday for us, right? Sunday was I think it was Sunday. But I saw it. And I was like, oh, my God, what is going on right now, dude? Like, this was insane, you know? Um it changed it changed a lot of stuff it changed i think it changed a lot of people's perceptions um in both good ways and bad ways because you saw the propaganda from all over the place like ramp way up of course just because like anything having to do with war it's there's going to be propaganda from all sides doing all kinds of stuff like you see it you, you see it in ukraine the russian propaganda the ukraine has their own we are doing our own there's probably china ones that are doing their own that are like interjecting and it becomes very confusing and convoluted hard for people to find like sift through all the nonsense and find the facts and that's why it's important to have conversations like this with people that were on the ground and that have the experiences and have friends that were there. So that way we, we can get actual, like actual, accurate information from the people that were there experiencing it. So, yeah, so uh, you're right about the propaganda thing. So yeah. I just want to ask you, OK, if they're coming to fight the Israeli forces, yeah. it's fine, right? It's, it's war. Yeah. They're going inside bases, for example, and did what they've done. Sure. It's war. They're yeah. soldiers. Okay. That, they, by, by the way, that that piece, like, I heard that there was a lot of reserve. It was like a holiday, right? It was yeah. a holiday, and a lot of people yeah. were home with their families. Yeah. And I remember hearing about the reservist stations that were getting attacked. Like, 
I can't imagine something more terrifying than that because they're probably terrifying. just like low security posture, probably just chilling. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like people are getting shot. Like, I can't even imagine how crazy yeah. scary that was. And, for and let's, let's think about it. If they came to fight the Israeli forces and they went to soldiers, this is war. I could understand it because this is war. Yeah. Why you shoot dogs? Why yeah. do you shoot one year old baby? Why do you put babies in the fucking oven? And yeah. why do you women yeah why to dehumanize uh, you dehumanize them because yeah. this we, we deal with inhumane people yeah i, I cannot i can't even call them people i'm sorry yeah we monsters really, m we just face with evil monsters yeah Dem i th i feel like the devil was taking notes the, yeah. this day it was crazy yeah it, you know human beings are capable of, of incredible things like incredible positive things but they're also capable of, of great evil acts as well I and you see it, it you see it yeah exactly i just feel like the whole the world is so super advanced and technology and blah blah blah. just emotionally nobody did anything to like evolve <laughs> heal your trauma wounds to, to make this world better yeah the, oh, the the responsibility of making this world a better place is on us it is we need to look inside ourselves and to heal our wounds so we can become more uh, like better for the world and yeah. people don't do it like we're so advanced and this and oh sorry i'm, I'm just becoming it's emotional okay. so i know English i know is like, blah, blah, blah. i know i know it's okay <laughs> um the, the world is so advanced technology but emotionally idiots yeah well sometimes you like it you know, at the end of the day, we're animals, you know, and some like, yeah, we have all this technology at our fingertips and we're able to do all these amazing things. But sometimes we revert back to like very animalistic behavior. And a lot of it has to do with like extreme poverty, you yeah. know, and it, because like when people are suffering from extreme poverty and they're not able to feed their families or they don't have anywhere to make money. And then you've got places like Iran that are offering all this money to support these organizations over there. Right. And then people are getting offered money like, hey, if you come work with us and you do these things, we'll feed your family. We'll pay for you to have a place to live. We'll offer you all this stuff. And they're living in on the street. Yeah, of course they're going to do anything. They don't care how exactly. how crazy it is. You know, and that goes for anywhere on the planet, you know. And yeah. and it it just it happens to be that Iran is specifically supporting all of these organizations. And I I think it's important and I said this in the very beginning. I th I think it's important for people to understand that Hamas does not care about the Palestinian people. <laughs> Hamas no, no. Hamas is sponsored is a state sponsored terrorist group that Iran is paying exactly. paying to do this stuff because they just want to harm Israel. They don't care about the Palestinian people. They don't care if they lose Palestinians. They're, they would happily sacrifice Palestinians just to, just it, to yeah. harm Israelis, to harm Jews, yeah. because they are like, they want to make sure that Israel doesn't exist. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's important that people are able to sift through the, the nonsense because you got a lot of people here in America that are very misinformed and are across the world, too, in general. They, they don't know. They don't understand the nuances because they're not geopolitical experts. They don't understand the like the inner workings of what's going on with nations and nation building and and the, the relationships that na different nations have with different people. I mean, there is over I know personally of 20 over 20 different Iranian Revolutionary Guard sponsored organizations that are paid for from Iran that they're using as proxies because then they can basically take their hands off and act like they don't have anything to do with yeah. it. Right. And it's all over Syria. It's all over Iraq. It's all over Lebanon. It's all over uh, Gaza inside of Egypt. Probably. I'm sure that they have their hands in Qatar. They probably got their hands all over the place. Inside, Not that they're... inside Israel in the yeah. West Bank. Inside. Yeah. In the West Bank, too. Exactly. And, and the thing is, is that like, and that's not to say that the Iranian people are bad because no. I'm sure there are a lot of very good Iranians. Iranian people are awesome. Yeah, and they know what it's like to have freedom because in the 70s it was a very popular exactly. tourist destination. And then when the when the the Shah was was ousted, right? Um, then and then you had the the uh, the Ayatollah come in. Mm -hmm. Then they became this this um, you know this. Uh, dictatorship and they just exactly. rule everything with an iron fist and the people are suffering there just the same as they're suffering everywhere else but they have all this money like the government over there has all this money and they have all this stuff and you know they're they're wreaking havoc throughout the entire region because not only does it 
they because they don't like us. Number one, they don't like us. And if it makes us look bad in any way, they're going to do it. And if it if it harms Israel in any way, they're going to do it yeah, because it, all it does they don't that, again. This is why they don't care if people are being sacrificed because they only care about making America look bad and harming Israelis and trying to destroy Israel. That's Absolutely. all. That's all they care about. You know. And I just want to talk about for a second about the Iranian people. Yeah. I get a lot of support from the Iranian people. Yeah. I freaking love the Iranian people. Yeah. And I feel sad for the Iranian women. Yeah. They are being oppressed, tortured, depressed. Yeah. And I am so sad for them. We could have been such good friends. We could have been like thriving economy together and doing amazing things together. But yes. their leadership and our leadership chose really bad ways for us. And we really feel like Netanyahu sold us. Mm. And this is such a bad way to feel. Yeah. Yeah. We feel like our people were sacrificed for the weakest leadership we've ever had. Yeah. And this is really, really sad for us. Yeah. I know there's a lot of tumultuous stuff going on politics wise with you guys. I don't personally know enough or have spent enough time yeah, yeah. to know the inner workings of what's going on. But I know that there's been like I heard there were massive protests happening uh, like against Benjamin Netanyahu, yeah. like on the months leading up, because I think he was doing something with the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. Or he was the, trying to was, like um, take over control of the yeah, Supreme Court or something. Exactly. something Can you talk like, about that a little bit? Uh, listen, to be honest, in this conflict, I wasn't involved. I was like, okay. I, I didn't understand. I, I understood both sides. Yeah. But I wanted like a balanced solution yeah. for it. They wanted something uh, like the left wing wa wanted something, the right wing wanted something, and. Most of the people in Israel just want a balanced solution for this thing. Yeah. But, you know, extremists, uh, extremi how do you say it? Extremists? Extremists. Yeah. yeah. They, they make a lot of noise. Yes, they and do. It's the same in this country. Uh, absolutely. Most people here in America are in the center. Exactly. They like they they have they believe in some things over here. They believe in some things over here. But the people that are the loudest are the craziest people on both sides. Exactly. And it, and every that's all everybody sees. And so they think everything's falling apart. But most people are right here in the center. Because they just want people to be able to be free to live and their lives the news, and yeah, whatever, and, you know? And the news just show the, the extreme people. Yeah. And then we think that we are alone, that the world is against us. But this is not right. I've been walking around all around chat show and people were hugging me. Only one, um, let's say it, a rude lady. Yeah, me, <laughs> one rude lady. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm course. trying not to curse. Yeah, it's okay. She told me, take off your flag. We don't know. We don't want politics here. She's Turkish. And I said oh. to her, oh, really? I want to see if you tell to an American person to take off their flag what they will do to you. I'm not asking you. This is not politics. This is my life. Yeah. My brothers and sisters are being killed in Gaza. Yeah. This is not politics. This is my life, and I will go proudly with my flag. Sure. You should be able to represent your country. Absolutely. Nobody should be able to give so. you a hard time about that. I if if, so. they, if she had had a Turkish flag, nobody would tell her to take her Turkish yeah, flag off. Do whatever you want. Yeah, and do whatever by you the want. way, I love the Turkish people as well. Cause, sure. Because... Most of the people in the world just they just want to live peaceful life. Yes. This is all we f want. I agree. Why do why do we need to go to to fight with this f terrorist? Yeah. This is madness for real. It is. And you know what? If Israel was committing genocide in Gaza on October 8th, Gaza wouldn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We should have bombed them and I say it because I feel so mad about this thing we should have bombed them uh, bomb them so hard yeah this day after this happened the terrorists yes, yes. absolutely yeah. yeah of course absolutely I'm not talking about the innocent people yeah, and I yeah. do know that there are innocent people in Gaza I believe there are yeah. but if they don't fight against Hamas what can we do yeah we will we not defend ourselves because there are innocent people there yeah. fear Bibas is a one-year-old baby and he's in Hamas captivity. I swear to you, he's, he's innocent. Yeah. All the women that were and tortured to death, they're innocent. Yeah. Uh, so if they hurt our innocent people, I choose my people. I choose yeah. my people and I do not represent my government. I represent my people. Yeah. This is all I care about. Yeah. You know, see, the weird thing is, is I remember what it was like in the 1990s when Bill Clinton was our president and uh, you had Yasser Arafat over there that was kind of like doing the stuff, running the stuff, running the show for them. And he seemed to be a little bit more level-headed than the, the the current Hamas people that got put into power. And it's it's changed a lot since since those times. And it's I think over time, it's been progressively becoming more tumultuous, more, uh, I guess, uh, what's the word for it? Just like unpredictable, you know? And it sucks because I see 
like millions of dollars from the UN pouring in there for to get them like clean water and food and plumbing and yeah. all this stuff. And then all that all that stuff that gets shipped in there gets taken from Hamas to make rockets and all this other stuff and to build tunnels with when it was originally intended to help people like for because there's like a humanitarian crisis going on exactly yeah. if if it went to the innocent people all right yeah all right but it's not yeah. hamas is taking it and yeah. all the money that the world donate to gaza they could have been such a thriving economy yeah but they use it for terror. Well, you guys were, I, like, both leading up to when that happened, a lot of people that lived in Gaza were working in Israel. Yeah. Like, they were working because they knew they could make more money and they could put food on the table and then bring it back to their families over there in Gaza. And we, like, uh, th you know. the, the, the bottom line is that Israel just want to live. Yeah. We love life. We appreciate life. And these terrorists, they bless death. Yeah. They believe that if they commit suicide and kill as many Jews as they can, 72 virgins will wait for them in heaven. Yeah. Surprise, mother you are not going anywhere. Yeah. Do you know, uh, do you know anything about the Abraham Records or the Abraham Accords? Have you heard about that? Maybe in Hebrew, I don't understand so the, what it the, means. So the Abraham Accords was basically like an agreement that was between... Um, Saudi Arabia and Israel, where they were going to try to, oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. trying to normalize relationships yeah. between the two countries, right? Um, like and, the peace we signed. Right, them, right, like a peace accord, like, hey, let's start working together to yeah. find common solutions for problems. I know. It. And, you know, that was getting ready, that was getting some steam, right? And then all of this stuff happened all of a sudden. In my mind, what I feel like happened was that Iran saw this as a bad opportunity because they're like, we don't want we don't want Saudi Arabia becoming friends with Israel because traditionally speaking, you know, you've got mostly Shia population in Iran and the mostly Sunni population in Saudi Arabia. Right. So they typically didn't get along very well, but they they're trying to normalize relations with Saudi Arabia now. And they it's in their it's not in their best interest to have Israel being friendly with Saudi Arabia if they're trying to establish a friendship with them. So yeah. I feel like it's very convenient, mildly convenient for them that this whole thing happened right as, you know, these talks are going on to try to, like, normalize relationships between the two countries. Yeah, I agree what with what you're saying, but to be honest, yeah. I just believe that governments in general mm. are pure evil. And I mm. saw it after October 7th. Yeah. For real. No, I, I really wanted to believe in our government before. Yeah. And I really, like, give them a chance. Maybe they'll do good. Yeah. But the economy of this world is based on sadness, on yeah. war. They don't want happy people. Happy people doesn't pay, they don't pay money. Yeah. And the money ca come when people are depressed, when people are mad, when people hate themselves. So if they want to make more money... They need to make more wars. Yeah. So I don't f trust any f government. Yeah, that's Power a real problem. That's a real problem, though. Like, you know, because you, you don't want perpetual war. You got to have peace eventually. And we got to have like, you know, we need to find a way to make life more sustainable for people so that people are able to make a livable wage. They're able to like live in a decent home. They're able to feed their families. This They're is able. All we want. Yeah, people like in everybody across the whole planet. That's that's human humanity. That's all they want. They don't need. <sighs> yeah. they, nobody. Most of us don't want a super yacht. We don't want to like yeah. do all this crazy stuff. We just want to be able to live a normal life without being in fear for someone attacking our house or like attacking us be able to like feed our families and make enough money to live in a nice home like and that's pretty that's pretty reasonable you know what i mean um but you're right like the unfortunate thing is that when governments get very large and they get all this bureaucracy and it becomes very complicated then it makes it very difficult for them to make decisions uh because it's, it becomes so difficult for that decision process to take place and it's always it's always going to be better when, when things get resolved at a local level at a smaller level, because like this community over here, say, for example, is going to know how to fix their own problems better than this gigantic yeah. bloated thing that's super yeah. like super complicated, you know, and it's like that everywhere across the planet. I'm sure it's like that here in some places. Um, and, and I'm sure it's like that in Israel and a lot of places, too. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Absolutely.
So yeah, so this is about October seventh. Yeah. Let's talk about us. <laughs> yeah. About happy things. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, I, you know what? I I really would like to know more about you okay, and okay. like where you're from <laughs> and like what got you here. I know we start off on a rough, but it's important yeah. to talk. This stuff is yeah, important. I just, but I just wanted to to remind people that we still have people in captivity. Yeah. 136 people are still in Hamas hands, yeah. including babies, including women. So this is for them. Yeah. I feel so sorry for my people. Yeah. And I really hope that something changes. And now we can talk about. Yeah. Everything you want. <laughs> okay, perfect. So yeah. where where yeah. are you? Where were you born? Okay, so I was born in Ramat Gan. Ramat Gan. Yeah, it's uh, close to Tel Aviv. I'm in the center in, of Israel now. I live in Rishon LeZion. It's also next to Tel Aviv. Okay. Um, I grew up in a small uh, neighborhood in Ramat Gan. Okay. Um, I was abused as a kid. Were you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for almost a decade. For almost a decade. Yeah. By your mother or father? Father. Yeah. Father. Mm -hmm. Did he? Did he leave eventually? He passed away. He passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. No, uh, it's fine. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I was sexually abused from the age of seven until the age of 17. Seven to 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about it very freely because I want more people to heal their tra trauma wounds. From your from your father? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, this is all right. This is what my soul signed on when it came to when it came to this world. Yeah. Yeah. I, I probably knew that I'm strong enough to go through it and help others and prevent others from going through it. So uh, the thing was that I didn't know that something wrong happened to me. Yeah. I thought that every father do it to his daughter. This is what I thought. Oh my Cause, God. Because this is how you grow up. This is what your father tell you. And you just grow up like this. And I was really mad at God. And I was, I hated God because my father was religious and he said that God loves him. And I th thought to myself, if God loves him, why does he do it to me? Why is he doing these yeah. evil things? And, yeah. And I hated God for it. And my life was really miserable before I started going to therapy and understanding my own wounds. Yeah. And uh, when I joined the military in 2013, I started in a desk role job. I had a low medical profile and I was in the military court. Okay. Um, what, is the, what do you mean by the military court? Yeah, it's like a desk roll job, nothing interesting, just okay. like um, something really not interesting. Okay. And I went to basic training, and during the basic training, I held a gun for the first time. Yeah. Because in Israel, we don't have like a gun culture like you have in the United States. Yeah. And I fell in love. I was like, whoa, I want to be in the military for my whole f life. <laughs> and I didn't realize back then why I love firearms so much. Yeah. Now I understand that my... That the people that should have protected me from the whole world hurt me. So my brain wanted like the most effective tool for the job to defend itself. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to be a combat soldier, but I had a low medical profile. What, um, it, what a low medical profile for what? For asthma that was inactive. Yeah. You had asthma. Yeah. From the oh. age of seven until the age of 17, my body oh. spoke. This is really interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then I had to prove the military that I don't have asthma anymore and I'm able to be a combat soldier. So okay. I started fighting the system for one year to become a combat soldier. Uh, during this time, my father passed away. And now the world needs to understand that growing up in an abusive family is the most confusing thing in the world. Because in order for this abuse to happen, a lot of mental abuse and manipulation needs to take place. Yeah. And I had like two fathers. On the day, he was an amazing father. He was providing things to our home. He was yeah. a regular father. And during the night, he was my devil. So I didn't know, should I love him or should I hate him? Yeah. So I grew up in a very confusing environment. Um, and then my father got cancer okay. during me in the military. And back then, he, I loved him. He yeah. was like my father. I didn't understand that something was wrong happened. Yeah. Uh, something wrong was happened. And then he... Uh, started getting really sick and the army told me uh, the army of course didn't know about what I went through yeah. but they told me that if my father passed away I won't be able to be a combat soldier because I mentally I won't be able to deal with it and I said I am going to be a combat sol soldier no matter what yeah and then he passed away on, a, on April 2013 he passed away and my commanders told me Orin, you don't need to go to combat roles. Stay with us in the military court. Everything is going to be fine. Yeah. Just finish your service and, that, and this is it. And I was crying and saying, I am going to be a combat soldier. Yeah. So in August 2013, uh, I managed to move to the search and rescue unit. 
And this was one of the happiest moments of my life. Um, I started all over again. I started the basic training again and the search and rescue training. And it was an amazing experience for me. Yeah. And my commanders wanted me to be a commander. And back then, I didn't realize how I tricked them because I thought I'm very bad. I'm very <laughs> lazy. And I had really se low self-value. And I thought to myself, oh. why do they see in me something I don't? Yeah. So probably I tricked them. Um, and then I went to a commander course and I failed. I, I did everything in my power to fail to prove myself that I'm bad. It was like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had like an impos um, imposter syndrome. Do you, do you feel like your, your low, I guess like your poor opinion of yourself was stemmed from like the abuse that you absolutely suffered? absolutely i okay. never saw in myself anything good i just saw in myself like a tool to serve others so That's, um yeah. I, I went to the army and they were like you can be an amazing commander and i'm like do you want to put responsibility on my shoulders yeah it was crazy for me and then i was injured in the commander course and i failed yeah. And I was crying so hard because on the one hand, I really wanted to be a commander. On the second hand, I hated myself and I didn't think that I can be a commander. Yeah. Um, and then I went to like um, to, to rest for two months. Okay. And they told me, do you want to go back to your desk role job? And I was like, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. I came here to be a combat soldier. Yeah. And then I really wanted to understand where uh, there were no women before. And then I wanted to be. And then I there were no women in the combat uh, there were, roles? In, in the role that I aimed to be, there were no women before. Okay. So the front squad of the battalion commander didn't have women at all. Okay. And I went to my battalion commander and I was very pretty and with nails and everything. Like, not the, the, the way you imagine a combat soldier. Yeah, yeah. And I went to him and I said, hey, I want to be in your front squad. And he's looking at me and he says, listen, you're sweet, for real. But I need men in my front squad. <laughs> For I real. Need, I need <laughs> lions yeah. in my front squad. I'm going inside Arab villages. We arrest people. This is very dangerous. Yeah. A woman can do it, cannot do it. And I looked at him and I had a lot of chutzpah. Chutzpah is like rude. I was rude. Chutzpah? Chutzpah. You got to use your, your phlegm when you're saying that. Yeah. Chutzpah. Chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a lot of chutzpah. And okay. I said to him, I can take you on my back and run all over the place if you want and he looked at me and said Go, get out you're rude and i was very very consistent and i insist to be in his, in his front squad yeah and every day i just went back to his office and i told him give me a chance yeah after like a month he, he broke and said okay you have one month's trial he finally gave you a chance yeah only one month trial okay and then i ended up for like eight months there until the end of my service and it was such an amazing experience to be in the front squad of the battalion commander we did amazing stuff we yeah. we and i think i feel like it really developed me and made me understand how strong i am because you know as a as a girl that grew up in an abusive family, you are very scared, you are very introvert, you are very uh, suspicious of everything. And in the army, I feel like it gave me the, the other extreme. I became very aggressive, I became very outgoing. And when I grew up, I had to balance between the two. Yeah. And then, when I, uh, like during the military, I started posting on Instagram, like picture of myself yeah. with uh, uniforms and with firearms. Sure. And then American people, <laughs> I love the American people. Yeah. And then the American people came at me and they were like, are there girls in the military? There's girls in the oh IDF. <laughs> and then I started getting famous in, in, in America. That's and cool. It's, it's funny because I became famous in America before I get famous in Israel. Really? Yeah. And I no got kidding. really famous in America for the guns that I did. And then I started talking about Israel. I started talking about uh, firearms. Gun companies started like approaching me and say, do you want to shoot with us? And I was like, Th that's weird, but yeah. But yes. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Firearms, free ammo, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I started like being a gun model and I hate this name because it sounds <laughs> so f model. Yeah, I, I called in Israel. They started like asking me on the news. What are you? Why do you promote firearms? And I was the first one to do it. So they were like, what are you doing? And yeah. I had like, um, I'm a gun model. Oh, what a horrible name. It sounds so <laughs> sexist. Jesus. And I really wanted 
people to see that yeah. I'm professional, that I take courses, that I'm a sportive shooter, that I was a combat soldier. But yeah. the fact that I was dressing provocatively, pro provocatively? Yeah, yeah, provocatively. Yeah. yeah. Um, it made people think that I sell firearms with my body, and it was oh. really sad for me because I really, I really wanted to become, to become more professional every time I, I did it. Sure. So well, here's the thing. So yeah. there's a lot of girls that I know in this country that do similar stuff that you do, mm -hmm. and I think that the one of the things I've noticed a lot of women are trying to strive for is that they're like, I, I am capable of being able to engage targets in an effective manner like and i'm able to like portray and show my marksmanship skills but i'm still able to have like my nails done Absolutely. and my hair done and do all this stuff and i can still do all these things you know that doesn't mean you know i think i think it's just basically people want to be able to show everybody that you can you can be like a girly girl yeah. but also do like very aggressive and and cool stuff that's like with your hands and out exactly. there like and i think it's great you know. to emphasize your femininity sure. in such a masculine place it's amazing yes because it is kind of it is kind of a masculine like centric but we're thing. changing it yeah but and that, but that's the thing <laughs> that's the thing about this culture is everybody is welcomed in yeah. very very much so every every time everywhere i've been here everyone's been very welcoming absolutely every one of these like companies and businesses and like everyone in the community in general is very welcoming open friendly yeah. nice and everybody's like open to come by and i think that's awesome that's an awesome part of this is just Absolutely. the community aspect and, and the thing that i love to see this year is there are many women yes uh, compared to the years before i see many women here and it's it feels so good like this is just a f tool yeah it, it's not masculine or feminine it's a f tool everyone yeah. can f use it and i love to see more women that are able to defend themselves because yes I've been a victim. Mm. I don't want to be a victim anymore. I want to be able to defend myself. Absolutely. Um, so when I finished my mandatory service, I felt lost because I wanted to be a, an, an officer and I wanted to like build a military career. But I finished my military. But, but in the end, I just w really wanted to, to finish my military service. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I started like um, looking for a degree, something to study. Right. Mm. And then I saw that nothing is interesting for me nothing and nothing and i was so frustrated i was like is there no place for me in this world mm. i and then you can understand it's related to my trauma and the things they went i went through okay. um so i i you know i was really miserable and i just started like um shooting all over and study everything i learned i studied dba i started horse riding i studied fitness instructor horse riding yeah, yeah i love horse fitness riding. instructor yeah are yeah. you big into fitness i uh, know like i'm a little out? bit fat but <laughs> <laughs> you said i'm a little bit fat why you yeah. like you like eating you like eating I, bread I, yeah it's tasty i and know yeah, i like it too. I, I, tr I work out a lot but yeah i'm but you I, do I work to, out a lot. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. But I used to do it way more. Way more. Yeah. But now I love my body the way it is, so it's fine. Okay. Well, that's good that you're you're like comfortable in your own yeah. skin. You're getting to a place where you like that. I think like in the best shape that I had, I hated myself, and really? now I'm not in the best shape that I had, but I freaking in love with my body. Well, that's I good. I think it's amazing, and I think it, it functions great, and I do a lot of great things. So. I love my body and I yeah. love myself. It's really nice. That's important. It's it is, important to have self-love, man. People but don't. It's, but it's, but it's, you need to work on it. Yes, you do. Most of the people don't like themselves naturally and it's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. But you need to work on being like your own best friend because in the end yes. of the day, you are going to sleep alone with your head. It doesn't matter if you are married, if you have kids. This yeah. is amazing if you do. Yeah. But in the end, you're alone in your head. Yeah. So you better love yourself and you better work on this relationship because this is the most important relationship you'll ever add that's great Amen. advice for everybody Absolutely. like be nice to yourself yeah you need to, to speak to yourself with compassion yeah like okay uh, let's say for example you failed something a relationship okay you you, you were trying to go on a date and this day just failed. Yeah. And you just start, like started beating yourself. Oh, I'm I'm unlovable. I'm so bad at everything. Nobody's going to love me. I'm not deserve love. Yeah. And then the brain just keep working on it. But yeah. if you say, okay, I, I tried. I know that this person maybe is not for me. I'm not for him. And it's okay. Yeah. But I deserve. I'm worthy of love. Sure. And, you know, just keep 
trying. People are so miserable in their head. Yeah. Just talk to yourself as you would talk to your best friend. You yeah. would encourage your best friend to go on more dates. You would encourage your best friend to try again. Yeah. You would tell them you are great and you are worthy of love and you should try again. This is okay. This is the way you should speak to yourself. Yeah. But this is something I learned only after I went to therapy. Yeah. But during this time that I finished my mandatory service and I was really miserable, I hated myself. Yeah. And I started like just shooting firearms and it felt great and I started like getting famous and then I thought that when I'll be famous and rich I'll be happy right this yeah. is what Disney told me this is what everyone <laughs> Disney told, told me yeah. yeah I felt like there is there should be like a fairy tale like a Prince Charming need to come and save me just like pop the, up out of the ground yeah and then uh fame would make me happy and then I was really miserable because the more famous I got, the miserable, the, the more miserable I become. Yeah. And then in 2019, I was on a Survivor show. You were on a Survivor show? Yeah, and I was in the finals. And there was an interesting moment there. The makeup artist did my makeup. Yeah. The photographer took pictures of me. Everyone was like, Orin, Orin, can I have a picture with you? Oh my God, I love you so much. And the only thing that went, in, went inside my head was, I want to die no, oh, why am i so miserable if i'm so famous yeah i thought that fame will heal my heart mm. and then it was a very sad moment now i look at it as one of the happiest moments i've ever had yeah because it was one of the things that that led me to 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 be like okay i give up i understand that the techniques i used for this life is incorrect yeah can someone help me I explained to me how we should live and then I also gave up on romantic relationships okay because every romantic relationship I've been in was violent oh and I was miserable and I thought all men are violent and all men are cheaters and I had this like limiting beliefs yeah and then i think like in the moment i just gave up and i said okay i cannot do it anymore fame yeah. didn't work money didn't work romantic relationship didn't work for me god was like okay now it's your turn and yeah. then my husband came into my life okay good and he's the most incredible person i've ever met yeah and it's not because he's my husband um <laughs> <laughs> where did you meet him so uh I was like, I gave up on relationships, yeah. like totally. And a friend of mine just called me to a pool party and I was really antisocial, really. I, well, I wasn't able to like speak to you personally. I was antisocial. Yeah. Um, and he told me, come to this pool party. And I was like, nah, leave me alone. I don't want to come. And then uh, he, he just really insisted to me to come. And then I said, okay, I'll come. And I saw this beautiful man and he came, he came in with a dog and I was like, Oh no, this is way out of my league. Oh, I, I, no. I had really low self value, really, really you're low. You still, you still working yeah. on that, yeah? I, and, and now I like myself, but okay. th back then I, w I had really, really so low self value. Okay. Um, and I thought I'm not worthy of love. Yeah. And he came in, and he, you know, started talking to me, and I was like, this is suspicious. Why does he talk? Suspicious. To me? Yeah. What has? What does he want? He probably needs one. He probably something. wants something exactly. from me. What does he want from exactly. me? Exactly. Yeah. This is, this is the way I li I really lived. This is sad. Yeah, I and get then, you. Um, we started dating. Okay. And things went amazing. We fell in love. Good. Um, and and now it sounds like the prince charming just came and saved me, right? Yeah. Absolutely no. <laughs> the first Not like year, that. No, the first year of our re uh, relationship was really really hard. Yeah. After two months, he asked for my phone. He told me, Orin, give me your phone. I want to look through your messages." And I went, "No, no, no! You are not touching my phone. Oh, Privacy." No. And then, thanks God, he took my phone and he saw that I was talking to another man behind his back. Oh. Yeah. And then he asked me the most simple question no one asked before why why would you do it yeah if you say you love me so much and i love you so much and then i looked at him and i said don't you speak with girls behind my back like this is how romantic relationships should go no and he went no orin i love you and i want to be with you so i am only with you yeah and then i was like oh okay listen up i don't know what's going on right now yeah but I want to be with you, so I swear to you that I'll tell you the truth no matter what. And then um, people need to understand that the truth 
is a very scary thing for a girl that grew up in lying and hiding. Yeah. Um, so we worked on the relationship and the first year was really hard because I had really bad communication and I had, I, I just, I, I, I was screaming at everything. I was really, I, I, I have PTSD, so yeah. I didn't know how to deal with life, how to deal with conflicts. And he was really balanced. He wasn't like, you know, perfect and this is it. But yeah. he, he, he was willing to work on the relationship. So every time we, for example, argued, um, and I wanted him to go after me and to be like, oh, really, please don't go. Yeah. And I wanted the drama. He was just sitting on the couch and he was like, I am not going to follow you. I'm here to talk. If you want to talk, you may sit down next to me and we will figure it out. But I'm not going after you. Yeah. I'm not leaving you, but I'm not going after you. Yeah. And then I was like, hmm, all right, <laughs> I'll sit here and I'll talk to you. Is he older than you? No, he's 30. He's 30? Yeah. How, wait, how are you? 30. You're, thir you're both <laughs> 30? Uh, on, in a month, I'll be 30. He's okay. Like, uh, he's my age. He's very, just very balanced. He sounds very mature. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you're saying is very... So that's a really big deal, like... Truth, like telling the truth and talking to people, being honest with people. I think honestly, the the most important part of any yeah. relationship is everybody being honest with each other. And because I if you can't trust somebody, there is no relationship. And the thing is you know? that I feel like in America there is a lot of hiding, and this there is, is what probably. I'm like trying to change. In my country, I do advocacy for mental health, and I speak about it in my podcast, and I do it great. And yeah. in America, I feel there is a problem with mental health. The, there is the, a very big problem. Exactly. Yeah. And when I come and I speak very freely about my story without any shame and any guilt. Yeah. And I let others understand that what they went through is not their fault, but yeah. the, it's their responsibility to heal their life and to heal their trauma. And to go to therapy is the most amazing thing you, you will ever do. Yeah. You just find out things about yourself and you heal your life and your life become heaven on earth why not yeah and then so b going back to my story yeah. um we, we were dating and i swore to him that i'll tell the truth and only the truth yeah and back then i was pulling my hair aggressively all the time and i didn't realize why i cannot control my hands yeah am i so f***ed up so, so i cannot control my hands yeah so i went to google and i wrote why do I pull my hair aggressively? You went to Google? Yeah. <laughs> the best source. <laughs> the best source, yeah. yeah. And then I read that there is a name that called trichotillomania to what I went through. This is like obsessive behaviors that you cannot control yourself yeah. because there is a big secret that you keep inside of you. Sure. And I was like, I don't want to talk about my secret. Yeah. I'm ashamed. I, I have a lot of guilt. I don't want to, you know, like um, uh, sexual sexual harassment in, in, inside the family is something that is filled with a lot of shame and guilt. And yeah. I didn't want to talk about it. It was the biggest secret of my life, right? Yeah. And then I said, okay, if it has a name, it has a solution. So I, you know, I started like trying to go to therapy and I went to like five different therapists and nobody helped me. And I felt like I'm stepping on my wounds and I was really, really miserable. Yeah. So I started like go Googling sexual abuse in childhood yeah and then i found out so many things and i like thrived and then i understood that if you talk about your trauma and you talk about the things that you went through you're healed this is what yeah. i understood very uh superficially of course yeah well, that's um, very true i'll tell you right now like when you talk about stuff anybody that's going through anything traumatic or yeah. had any like traumatic experiences the more you talk about something the more power it removes from exactly. that thing from you you know exactly. it's it's essentially you're like Look, I can't hold on to this anymore. I have to let go of it exactly. because if I try to control it and I keep it all inside, then it's just it's like drinking poison. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I, I got to tell you, the, the reason I'm, I'm saying this is what I understood superficially, because yeah. I believe um, we, we are not f***ed up. So we don't have to heal. We just need to process things. Yeah. So we have better life. So. The, the very superficial I think I understood is that I have to talk about it. I didn't understand like the healing process and the deeper things. Yeah. And then I said, okay, 
I'm pretty famous in Israel. Sure. I'll go to talk about it in the news. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You talk about it in the news? Yeah, it's okay. It's not a huge, a huge step to do, but yeah. I went to the news and Channel 13, and I said I was abused. I didn't say who was it, who it was. Yeah. I didn't say when. I didn't say anything. I just said that I was sexually abused. Do you think that you did that because you wanted to show other women who've experienced the same yeah. thing that it's okay to yeah. talk about it? Yeah. I, okay. Uh, back then, I said, okay, I, I get so many messages from women and men. I was abused too. I was... I was it. And then it's like, oh my God, I'm not alone. No. I'm not alone at all. Not at all. So maybe I better go and speak about it. Yeah. And then I really wanted to give lectures about, uh, um, you know, healing process. Yeah. And I went to this lady that builds lectures and I started talking with her about it. And she saw that I didn't process what I went through. Yeah. And she sent me to a therapist and she said, go to one session to this therapist and I told her no I've been to many therapies they don't help me blah 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 I'm just helpless mm. and then she said it's a gift for me go yeah. and I went to this amazing incredible therapist and I went out of this one session and I called my husband and I was like Gal you don't understand life was so simple and nobody f told me <laughs> I was shocked you know what she did she just very uh, she was very practical she said to me this is the behavior. This is where it came from. This is the way to solve it. And I was like, what the f***? Yeah. And then I started going to therapy a week after a week. And I started like evolving and understanding things about myself. And I really wanted to, to pass the, the, the healing process to others. Yeah. And then I was able to build amazing relationships, good friendships. And my amazing marriage is because I... I, I looked inside, and this is what I want people to understand. Yeah. This is not our fault if we were abused. Anything else. Absolutely not. This is not. not our fault. No. But this is our responsibility to heal our life. Yeah. And you want to hear the crazy thing? Um, one of the therapists I went, before this amazing therapist, yeah. told me, you need to forgive your father. And I was so mad. Mm. I was like, yeah. were you there when I was abused? When yeah. I cried for help, when I cried for God for it to stop, how come you say, uh, how dare you uh, tell me to forgive? Yeah. And then, a day after, I, f I was like, what did he mean with this forgiveness thing? Yeah. Okay, so I went to the best source, to the Google. The and Google. Yeah, I wrote how to forgive. And there, there is no practical way to forgive. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit yeah. <laughs> like in judaism in christianity in islam they tell us to forgive yeah why nobody tells us how to forgive yeah they say forgive and be like water and you will be fine and you will feel great all right i will be willing to forgive but how the f do i do it right how do i do it yeah and then i understood something i i went to this amazing therapist and she asked me where is your dad now and I said, he passed away almost 10 years ago from cancer. Yeah. And she said to me, you know something really interesting? I know that men that passed away from cancer early in the age probably had something in their childhood and probably were abused and didn't talk about it. Hmm. And I was like, what did you say right now? Yeah. And then I had a new feeling inside of my heart that I never felt before. It was compassion. Yeah. And then I said, okay, let me investigate my father's history. Yeah. And then I found out about the generational trauma of my family. And then I understood that every abuser was a kid that was abused and didn't yeah. take care of it. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I gave 26 years of my life to this trauma to control me. Mm. I was carrying my father... And this trauma on my back with chains. Yeah. And you know what? It's not how you forgive. It's why. Yeah. Once you understand why you forgive, it's easier for you. And then I understood that I want to be able to control my life. Yeah. To control the things that I go through. I'm not willing to be controlled by my trauma or yeah. defined by my trauma. I want to be able to take responsibility of my life. Yeah. And then I decide... I am going to forgive. I am going to understand how this forgiveness thing is going. So I said to myself, 
all right, I forgive immediately. Because I remember when I was 19 and my father was almost dying and the monitor was like one second before it stopped, I yelled at, at his body, I forgive you. So why am I still mad? Yeah. Why am I still carrying my father and the trauma with chains on my back? Yeah. And then I, just, I, I understood really important thing. I forgave for the wrong reasons and too early. Yeah. So first thing, I wanted to become. I wanted to be good people, a good pe person. Yeah. And good people forgive. That was what I thought. If I want to be the good people, the good people. Uh, sorry, my English is confusing. It's okay. <laughs> if I want, if I want to be a good person, yeah. I should forgive immediately. Yeah. The second thing I thought is that I don't want to go through this process. I don't want to go back to the events I went through. I just want to forgive immediately and be be okay this is what i thought you yeah. can forgive immediately you cannot and the third thing i understood is that the environment the people around me wanted me to forgive very quickly so they can move on with their life yeah they didn't care if i forgive or not forgive they just wanted their um to move the one with their life and they were like you should forgive you should forgive and i forgave for the wrong reasons and mm. one and you know what's crazy you cannot forgive the action the action was already done. There is nothing you can do to make it undone. Yeah. You can only forgive the damage. So unless you can put up your sleeves and show me your scars and tell me exactly what is the damage that caused you, you cannot forgive. Yeah. And I forgave my father for all the bad romantic relationship I had. I forgave my father for all the money I lost, for all the night I was crying for help. I forgave my father for all the times that I had night paralysis. I forgave my father for the uh, physical um, diseases I had. I forgave my father for the pain that this trauma caused me. I couldn't forgive the actions. Yeah. The actions was already done. So, And he passed away. And you know what? I was waiting for an apology. Mm. I was waiting for an apology for 26 years. And yeah. no one is going to apologize. Yeah. No one. And I, fi and I decided that my peace is more important than, than what I deserved. I owed an apology. And I owed people to say, you know, we're, you were hurt and we were sorry. But I never got it. So I decided that my peace is more important than their apology. And I decided I am going to forgive my father. I'm yeah. going to forgive the teachers that saw it and did nothing. I'm going to forgive my mother, my siblings. I'm going to forgive anyone. And the most important thing, I'm going to forgive myself. Yeah. And this was the hardest part. And I thought to myself, why didn't I fight back? Why didn't I run from home? I was so mad at myself. Yeah. And then I understood, how can I be mad at a girl that did everything to survive? I didn't know any better. And I did amazing to survive this life. Yeah. And forgiveness is absolutely highly recommended guys yeah if there was if there is someone who hurt you you probably ne never get an apology if it if you get an apology great yeah but you probably never get an apology no. but your peace is more important th than this apology yep if the abuser enjoys your apology i don't know they probably don't even care about you yeah. you need to heal your wounds you need to forgive them in order to move on in order to build worthy and amazing relationships and in order to trust yourself now i don't have trust issues i trust everyone you know why because i can trust myself yeah i know that i can go through anything i went through horrible things and i'm still alive standing and smiling so i'm f i'm willing to to feel the pain without fear I didn't take even one pill or medicine to like um, go through this process. I decided that I'm doing this process like without any medicines and yeah. that I'm looking to the pain in the eyes and then I'm going through the pain and this was the most amazing thing I've done to myself and I'm still doing and I'm still going to therapy because I think this is such an amazing thing to, to really understand who you are and to give the gift that you are a gift okay me you everyone is a gift to this world yeah. and if we are buried inside of ourselves we are losing and we need to be good to ourselves in order to be good to others yeah and if you you feel miserable and you hate this life 
first, please work on the relationship with yourself. Because the, the way you see with the world is just say a lot about the relationship you have with yourself. Yeah. I love myself. I wake up in the morning, I do my Jewish prayers, and then I say, look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, you are a miracle. I oh love you. Oh my God. <laughs> you are a miracle. <laughs> and this is why I want to like talk about, and this is why I talk about my trauma very freely. And I don't care what people will say to me. Because yeah. I know they talk from their own pain. Sure. Because if... If um, I'm if I'm happy with my life, I I wouldn't like want to comment bad bad things about you, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Do whatever you want. I'll do whatever I want. Sure. And this is what I'm trying to promote, guys. All the United States, please go to f- therapy. It's amazing, and you will have an amazing life. And yeah. this is the way to stop mass shooting in America. Oh yeah. I I gotta tell you something. A lot of people ask me in Israel. Do you want Israel to be like America with the gun freedom they have? And I say, I don't want to compare Israel to America. Because no. in Israel, every 18 years old boy or girl get a fully automatic rifle, yeah. air, like AR-15 on them everywhere. And they have like three full magazines and they take it home. And we've never had mass shooting in Israel. Yeah. You know why? Because in America... It's not the problem of firearms. It's the problem of mental health. Yeah. P- people need to go to therapy. Yeah. I feel like in America, a lot of the people... I, I love Americans. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. They are my favorite people. But yeah. they can be so fake. They can smile to you in your face and then stab you in the back without you knowing it. And I'm like, yeah. Ugh, this is a lot of energy to put. Just be the f- yourself. You know. This is the best. If I don't like you, you will know it. I promise to you. I will yeah. say to my... I, I will tell you, listen, I think that we're not like... Uh, I think this re- relationship is not for me. Yeah. And I wish you the best, but this relationship is not for me. I won't be like, oh, you're so great, and then I'll go behind your back like, Kagan is such a nerd or yeah. whatever. You say. <laughs> and um, in America, people do it all the time. Yeah. And this is the problem that the these two-faced people, this is the problem of hiding, of being ashamed of what you've been through. We need to heal our traumas in order to make this world a better place for our kids. And, you know, I went to therapy because at first I didn't even want kids. Because I said, okay, if my father did it to me, I have a potential to do it to my kids. I don't want to do it. And then I said, no, no, you know why? Uh, You know what? I'm going to therapy so my children won't have to go to therapy from me yeah and this is what people need to understand therapy is amazing you have nothing to be ashamed of you have nothing to feel guilty of and shame and guilt is what number one killer in the world please everyone that listen to it i know there is a huge problem with veterans that commit suicide in the united states and i feel so bad about it guys please get help yeah. it's nothing to be ashamed of if if veteran now will listen to it and and feel like suicidal or, or feel depressed i encourage you guys to go to therapy it's amazing you can heal with it you can make your life an amazing life to live and everything is is c- can be solved everything can be solved please go to therapy you yeah. have nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. This is such an amazing life to live. And don't lose it because the, the trauma we've been through. We yeah. need to fix it and we need to make this world a better place. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, like, oh, what are the big... i a lot. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No. I, I think... So, it, for me, it's important to be able to listen to people, too, because I talk a lot myself. Like, yeah. I, talk, I can keep going and going and going. But um, I learn a lot from other people by listening. And, and I've, I've also been told that sometimes I talk over people and I don't let them finish what they're saying. And that's like kind of consider people like perceive that as this dude is rude. So I also try to work, I'm trying to work <laughs> on that. But you said a lot of you said a lot of good stuff. So one of the things that comes to mind for me is that, uh, you know, in order for you to be able to solve a problem inside your own head, you have to be able to have the the, the capability of taking an accurate self appraisal and yeah. being honest with yourself about yourself, right? Because if you're in, if you're, if you're having a hard time being honest with yourself about yourself, how are you going to even be able to solve a problem? You're going to have a hard time finding that. And you're going to have a hard time telling somebody else that you need to talk to who's going to help you solve that problem, how to solve the problem. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, how are you going to be honest with somebody else? Right. And then this, uh, on a separate part of that is like, 
um, holding on to like that guilt and when we're talking about the shame and like the the whole um just holding stuff inside that in typically from what i've seen when you don't talk about stuff or you keep stuff locked up or you don't like put it out there or talk to somebody else about it it just sits there and festers inside your body and and you don't you you don't have the ability to get well you know and Another thing that was important, just to caveat off what you said, is how are you supposed to help other people if you don't help yourself? Because if you're a complete, utter train wreck, how are you going to have the wherewithal or the ability to help other people with their issues? And, and for me personally, one of the most gratifying things for me on earth is doing things for other people that help them, helping somebody get through stuff, talking to people about stuff, having a positive impact on other people. But if I am all screwed up in my brain and I'm not taking care of myself, um, I am definitely not going to be able to be of service to other people. Right. Mm -hmm. And a part of that is taking care of my body, like eating food. Like obviously my week, my diet this week's been trash because I'm, <laughs> I'm on vacation, right? And I'm like busy as crap. But normally when I'm home, I'm like taking care of my body. I'm like eating healthy meals. I'm eating like four or five times a day, eating tons of protein, uh, drinking a ton of water, which I'm also not doing here because I'm like, I'm like, I'm having an unhealthy work-life balance right now. <laughs> but normally I'm like, you know, taking care of my body. I'm going to the gym five days a week. I'm sitting in the sauna like seven days a week for 25 minutes at a time, I sweating. I'm like taking good care of myself. And so that way I can keep my mind healthy. So that way when a, when a situation presents itself to me where I can possibly have a positive impact on somebody, then I am present and I'm able to do that. Right. Exactly. And, and if you got to talk to somebody, like I talk to a lot of people too. I'm a big talker. I like to tell people things that have happened in my life. And I like to talk about what's going on with me and like, you know, things that I've experienced and like in any like stressful things I experienced or trauma that I might've gone through or whatever. And my trauma, you can't compare your trauma to other people's trauma, by no, the way, absolutely. at all. That's another thing that's important for people to understand out there is that like, what somebody else went through and what you went through doesn't negate the like th like the significance of that that had on you in your life Absolutely. you know and so that's important to remember and just to mention too but um you know that even um let's say okay yeah. I, first of all i believe that every human being needs to go to therapy and yeah. i'll explain why there is um to every person, yeah. there was a small occasion or something that happened in their childhood that made them choose between emotions and, um, like, how do I say it? Um, whoa, 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 just a second. I don't know how to say it in English. Between emotions and, like... Oh, you're talking about like you're talking about like in a, like an emotional response and a physical oh, response. No, like reasonable thinking. It's reasonable not, thinking. What, can I check how I write? You, you want to Google talking? it? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's not how you're good. You're but good. I, I was good in English for now. No, you, now. <laughs> uh, you honestly, you speak better English than a lot of Americans do. If I'm Thank being 100 percent honest with you, like a lot of us are like very poor at english and we live in america so yeah so i'm trying i'm trying my best well you're doing better than most um okay also most americans don't speak a foreign language because we're we're spoiled and we think everyone should speak our language even though we're not we're not special yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> but. so so eventually what i'm trying to say is there there in our life there was a small moment that made us choose subconsciously um, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to You're say okay. English. You're right. Subconsciously yeah. to like make a decision or to live a certain yeah, but, way or. But, yeah. To live in certain way. Yeah. That is not good for us. Okay. For okay. Example, yeah. Let's say, let's like say. Like self-destructive almost. Yeah. Let's say that my father abused my mother. Okay. Okay. And then my, my brain translated to, oh my God, all men are the same. All men are evil. All men are violent. Uh, emotions are bad. Being a woman is bad. Yeah. I, I build in my head some beliefs, and everyone does that. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. have like beliefs that we believe they are the truth, but they're yeah. absolutely not. Because and it happened when we were a kid, exactly. and that like that was like foundational experiences that we had when we yeah. were a child. Yeah, exactly. And then we grow up with this 
survival behaviors. Mm. And for, for a good time, they probably served us. Yeah. And they kept us alive. And sure. it's okay. But now, when you are in a good relationship and you want to build a good relationship, these behaviors still control you. Yeah. And you are not able. You need to, f you need to let them go yeah. in order to build good relationships. Yes. And this is why I believe everyone needs to go to therapy because yeah. it's amazing you became you become more happy you became more um a reliable person you you became more real and and i don't see a reason why not to go to speak to someone yeah because you know we, we think we know everything but breaking news guys we don't know nothing <laughs> yeah we no. are just human beings trying to live our best lives yeah. and if there is someone professional who can help you why not yeah it's amazing it, it's really it really changed my whole life like f until four or five years ago i was miserable i would sit in front of you and i was like um i don't want to talk about anything and look yeah. at me now i'm like thriving and i'm happy and yeah. i meet amazing people and i build amazing relationships and if people like going out of my life i wish them the best i'm yeah. not mad and i'm able to feel all the emotions that coming to me if it's pain sadness ang ang anger yeah. and everything that comes to me because i'm in peace and yeah. when i'm in peace i can feel free to feel all of these emotions without acting on them yeah. if you make me angry i would like to understand why your behavior made me angry yeah i want to understand why your behavior your behavior made me sad it has nothing to do with you it is it has a lot of uh things to do with me and yeah. i want to understand in order for it for to live amazing life and therapy is amazing well i'll tell you what like the one thing that like also occurs to me is like because of the fact that you've done so much of the self-work and self-development and like taking care of your mind and yourself it's allowed you the opportunity to then also help other people yeah. and give them pr like provide them advice say hey this worked for me mm -hmm. this didn't work for exactly. me this is something i tried and then that helps other people too and it pays it forward right and that's like kind of i feel like that we we all have a an equal responsibility to do good for our our fellow human beings being Absolutely. right and so the one of the best ways to do that is do things like this where we can share our experiences with like however many millions of people are out there that yeah. see this stuff and hopefully somebody gets something from it and maybe it has a positive impact because if it if it has a positive impact on it, even just one person then that makes a difference because that one person might tell two or three other people and maybe those three or four other people tell like three or four more other people Absolutely. and it and it spreads and it's just good because like the more people that take care of their minds and are good to themselves and are good to other people, the, the world's just going to be better. And it spreads, you know, same the same way that that evil, evil, negative thinking is also infectious. And another thing I meant to say earlier is like the way when you think about stuff and you constantly think about things, it it widens these neural pathways in your brain. So it makes it easier for you to think that way. So if all you're thinking about is like, oh, I'm awesome. I'm doing the, I'm doing good stuff. I'm helping people. I want to do all these good things. And you're constantly thinking these positive thoughts in your brain. It widens those pathways almost the same way that your blood vessels widen and more blood can pass yeah. through it. Right. And then it basically makes it easier for you to think these positive thoughts because you do it on a regular basis. Yeah. The same thing can be said if you're having negative thoughts. If all you think is like, oh, I'm such a piece of crap. I'm a terrible person. I'm like, you know, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be my friend. Why, why would anyone want to talk to me? Then it makes those pathways better. It makes it the easier for you to think negative and you yeah. get sucked into this negative thinking. Yeah. So that's why it's important to like you, the way that you, the way you think about yourself and the way that you think most of the time is how you're going to think most of the time, yeah. you know? And I, I got to tell you about it, that uh, a lot of people say to me, um, but I don't think that I'm awesome. I don't think that I go, do a good job. Why would I lie to myself? Yeah. Breaking news, guys. This little voice inside of your head, this is not you. Yeah. This is absolutely not you. It's a recording you have from your childhood. Yeah. This is your mother speaking. This is your father speaking. This is the people around you speaking. The voice inside of your head is not you. Yeah. You are a beautiful, beautiful soul yeah. that came to this world to, to make this world a better place mm -hmm. and to evolve and thrive and to understand things about yourself. So you can change the recordings in your head if you practice. Because mental yeah. health, is about, it's about practicing. It is. And if you practice, like, standing in the mirror and say, okay, I'll try to love myself. Yeah. I'll try to talk positive, positively about myself. 
every single day just a little bit yeah. to change the recordings that I have inside of my head, all of a sudden it will change because it's only recordings. It's not you. Yeah. You can change it. And it's not, it doesn't mean that you fake it because the things that you have inside of your head, they're not the truth. Yeah. They're recordings from stupid people in your childhood. You can take control of your own life. And this is a great, this is great news. Yeah. It is because you can change your life yeah. and you don't have to be a victim anymore. Yeah. And it's nice. It's nice to feel like you're in control of yourself. Yeah. You know, I like being in control. control of this is the only thing we have control over. Yeah. We think we control things. We don't control anything. Oh, yeah. You and I can just die right now and we have no control yeah. of it. Right. Well, yeah, it's the same thing that could be said. It's like you don't have any control over other people, but you do yeah. have control over yourself. Yeah. Same way. Same thing with me. I don't have control over anybody on this planet, yep. but I can definitely control myself yep. and be in control of how I feel, how I think on a regular basis, how I communicate with people, how I talk to people, how I treat people, you know, and that's, that's empowering. That should it be is. an empowering thing. You but know, let's, let's say that there is a man that listens to us right now yeah. and he's very uh, controlling of his girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. He goes like, you don't wear this and you don't go there and you don't talk to him and you, because yeah. why, why does he do it? Because he doesn't want to feel the pain that... He's afraid. It, exactly. He's that full of fear. Exactly. And uh, he doesn't want to feel the pain that it may cause him yeah. if she does these things, right? Yeah. But try to change it. Try yeah. to say, you are willing to do whatever you want. You, you can do whatever you are willing to do. And I will try to understand with myself why it may cause me pain. Yeah. And I want to make, I want to take control of myself. I don't want to take control of you. This is why my husband and I, we're not jealous people. Yeah. Because I want to see your true colors. I want to see your true face. If I control you, this is not you. No, if exactly. I, you don't do what you want. You are miserable. Yeah. And then this, this romantic relationship will end. Yeah. So I want to be a great human being and I want you to be a great human being that does whatever he wants yeah. and together we can build an amazing life but if I try to control you and go like don't, don't do this don't do that because I don't want to feel pain yeah. then I just ruin your life and ruin my life yeah. and the result the pain will come either way yeah it's gonna happen either way and it's gonna it's honestly it's just gonna be super unhealthy for both of exactly. you anyway because then you're gonna be constantly like worried all the time and anxious and stressed because you're worried that something's Definitely. gonna happen and then they're gonna be constantly stressed that you're controlling them or trying to control them and nobody likes feeling like someone's trying to control them that is a recipe for disaster exactly. and if you don't trust that person you need to talk to him probably exactly. and, and and you could probably work it out with him and if they do do something that betrays your trust like they do cheat on you or they lie to you well then you can consider like uh, you know weighing your options is it good for you to be with this person or is it not good for you to yeah. be with this person you know because again like what we were talking about before like be like be able to tell the truth and having integrity yep integrity is so important you know, that's right. like you can't have a relationship with people without integrity. You can't. You just can't. Yeah. You need to learn how to trust yourself. Yeah. You need to learn how to listen to your intuition. This yeah. is the most important thing in the world. And it was lost when we were kids. And yeah. we need to build it all over again. And it's it, we can do it. Yeah. I and this so. is the message I want to give to everyone who listened to this podcast. Yeah. You are able to change your life. You're able to live an amazing life. It's up to you. No one else. It's yeah. only up to you. And Kagan, thank you so much. Yeah, dude. I thanks. I had an amazing time with you. I am so glad that you were able to break away to come up here, man. This is awesome. Like I, so I, again, I've been following you for a long time. I love what you do. You, you do. You have a. You do. You make a huge impact on thank the community, you. not only for <laughs> for the the pro Second Amendment and like pro gun stuff, but also for like pro military and pro freedom. And also, like, showing women out there that they can do these things and still be feminine and it's completely okay and acceptable and, like, you can do this kind of stuff, you know. So you do, you do, and obviously, I didn't realize that you were so big into mental health and that was a, a, such an important, integral part of your life. This is so. the most important thing of my life. Yeah. I have a podcast in Hebrew called Warrior Spirit, and okay. I really want to make it in English, but as you can hear, my English is not, like, <laughs> very good. Sure, well, I'll tag, I'll tag that podcast <laughs> in the description um, as well so people can so, find so it. So, yeah, in the future, I believe I'll do it in English and at least I'll put subtitles on the Hebrew podcast because yeah. we are talking about so important things and I need more people to listen to it yeah. and because because 
guys, it's up to us to make this world a better place. Yeah, a rising tide lifts exactly. all of the ships, right? Exactly. And that's the, that's the way that you, that's the way that you solve these things. And I just want to say to the American people, guys, I love you. You are awesome. Keep your heads up. Keep your second amendment and keep your freedom. Mm. This is the most amazing thing about the United States that I love so much. Every time I hear your um uh, how do you call this the song that the um oh, like the America the other oh, is it like the American the anthem, anthem or the, the anthem? anthem? Yeah, so yeah, national sorry. anthem. The, the national anthem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I hear your national anthem, I just get bo- goosebumps. And when I see your flag, like in the wind, I'm like, oh my god, I love America. <laughs> uh, probably in another life, I was a marine soldier or something. <laughs> 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 so please keep your freedom, keep your head up, and and keep your Second Amendment. I mean, you guys, is the most important thing. You guys keep your head up too. I know you got a lot going down yeah. down there, and I've been I'm, I'm keeping a close tab on everything. So thank you. You know we're we're. Uh, uh, we, we are all very close friends. Thank you so, so and much. For a reason. So, again, I appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, I hope the next time that there's a shot show that you're here and we'll do another one. Amen. Does thank that sound you good? so much. Absolutely. All I'd right. love to. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Kagan. Cool. Yeah. Thank you.